Jesse Lane from St. Louis. My, my wife uh, is with our one-year-old daughter changing a diaper. So uh, turn with me to Job chapter 31. My charge this morning is blessed are those who serve the poor. Now listen, I'm going to give you a conviction today. You're going to walk away from this different, all right? You didn't, you, I hope you didn't come here today thinking that you were just going to walk away the same, did you? No, we're going to be different, right? This whole experience this weekend is, is going to change your heart, right? You're going to gain the faith to become something greater. It's going to come from God's word. Let's look at something awesome here in Job chapter 31, starting in verse 16. We're going to see the heart of a man who's been broken by God, okay? Here's a man who's been stripped of everything. If you know the story of Job, I'm sure you do. His health has been taken, his family's been taken, his wealth has been taken. Everything about this man has been stripped to nothing. And we're going to see something that comes out of his heart in his deepest suffering. We're going to see a deep-rooted conviction that this man has, okay? Starting in verse 16, he's, he's talking, he's like crying out, he's saying, If I have denied the desires of the poor, or let the eyes of the widow grow weary, if I had kept my bread to myself, not sharing it with the fatherless, but from my youth, I, I reared them as a father would. And from my birth, I guided the widow. If I had seen anyone perishing for the lack of clothing or the needy without garments, and their hearts did not bless me for warming them with the fleece from my sheep, if I had not raised my hand against the fatherless, knowing that I had influence in the court, then let my arm Fall from my shoulder, let it be broken off the joint, for I have dreaded destruction from God. For the fear of his splendor, I could not do such things. I feel like I could just read that again. Because there's so much there. There's so much there. Here's a man who who is not weeping because he no longer had his health. He wasn't weeping because he no longer had his wealth or his family. He was weeping because he couldn't help anymore. Here's a man who had a deep conviction to serve the widows, to serve the orphans, to serve the people who had no clothing, who were cold. He's like, I gave everything I had. There was no widow in my city that went without clothing. There wasn't an orphan that I didn't treat as my own child, that I didn't go and mentor and treat as if I was a father to them ownership of his city. Not only was Job a man who was very influential with the young men, he was also very influential with the older men, but he had this heart to serve the community. Man, not only was he an incredible husband to his wife, he had all these children, all these servants, all these responsibilities, right? He's the wealthiest man in the East, and yet he had this heart to serve the poor. What's awesome about that? It's that it's the heart of God. God has this deep, deep conviction about orphans and widows. It's a godly thing. And so something I want to give you today is three attributes that describe this heart. In Galatians chapter 2, you don't have to turn there. Just write it down. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 10. The apostles are, are talking to Paul as he's about to go on his missionary journey. And they have this request. In verse 10, they say, all that was asked. You guys with me here? Galatians chapter 2, verse 10. It says, all they asked, the apostles, right? All the apostles asked of Paul. This is kind of intense. All the apostles asked of Paul. They said, all they asked was that we should continue to remember the poor. The very thing that I had been eager to do all along. What's the first attribute? What's the first part of the heart that it takes? Eagerness. We've got to be eager to serve the poor. I hope you're not in mercy because you feel dragged into it. 
I hope you're not in mercy because you feel like, oh, nobody else is going to do it. I guess I'll wear the shirt and put something together. Let me be honest. I love serving. But I was a little weary when somebody asked me to give to mercy and be the leader because I'm like, dang, this is going to take something. It's going to cost. It's going to cost me energy. It's going to cost me time. It's going to cost me focus. It's a responsibility. Matter of fact, I'm going to be called, I'm called to do it with excellence. Like, whew, oh man, God, okay, I'll do it. You know, like that, you know, you got to get your heart behind it. But then the reality is that, man, I had to, I had to humble myself and realize, wait a second. Nobody takes this upon themselves. They're called to it. Right? And that's the second attribute. In Hebrews chapter 5, verse 4, it says, no one takes this honor on, him, on themselves. They receive it when they're called by God, just as Aaron was. Family, you've got to have ownership that God has given you a tremendous responsibility to serve. But not only to serve, but to learn something about him and to teach everyone in your church something about God that they didn't know about. God's giving you the opportunity to learn something special about himself that is so near and dear to him. And it's this love for the orphans and the widows. The third attribute, so the first attribute is eagerness, Galatians 2.10. The second attribute is identity and ownership, that we've been called by God, Hebrews 5. And the third attribute is 1 Corinthians 13, in verse 3. Paul says, if I give all that I possess to the poor, I even give over my body to hardship, right? He's like sacrificing. He's like, even if I, pos- if I give everything I possess to the poor, I give my body over to hardship so that I can boast, but I don't have love, man, I gained nothing. Family, you can't like be like, all right, I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to give my time, going to give my possessions, give everything I've got and not have love. You didn't do it the way God wanted you to do it. Family, we've got to have a heart of love when we serve. And so the three attributes of the heart that God calls us to have when we serve the poor is we first of all have to have an eagerness. We have to have an ownership of it that God's given us this opportunity. And then we've got to truly love the people that we serve. And what does God say will happen? You're going to be blessed. You're going to be blessed, man. When you serve people, when you serve people who have, man, I I got stories for days. They only gave us seven minutes, all right? I'm a preacher. I'll be up here all day, all right? Y'all better watch out. But I got stories for days. Like, if you've ever spent any time in a major city downtown, you've got stories too. Homeless people, broken people, drugged out people, people who genuinely need our help. And you have the opportunity to give to them. You've been given the opportunity by God to make a difference in their life and in the community. I just want to urge you, take that passage from Job and make it your own. That God is going to bless you with resources, material, time, and the heart to give to everybody around you. And that it's absolutely going to show them the heart of God. And you will be blessed. Amen? To God be all the glory. So we're excited for um, for us to, to get some wisdom from all these different sermonettes. So that every Mercy Road Life chapter can be just excited and ready to go in 2024. The first one we're going to start off with for sure is me, my, my wife, as my wife introduced. All right. Well, we heard this introduction before, but I'm going to introduce them again. Yeah, cool. right. um, but Come first on. up is our beautiful Jesus. sister, um, Christy Redding, and she's going to be doing, oh, yes, she's going to be doing Blessed Are Those With a Heart of a Child. And truly, um, she is an amazing woman. She is a nurse at Shirley Ryan, and she's a beautiful mom of five, but she's inherited so many children. That's us. Um, but I'm excited just to hear her heart. She truly has a heart for Mercy. Mercy's been is going crazy because of her recently. So just thank you so much for your heart. Um, and then after our beautiful sister Christy, we have the topic of blessed through generosity. And this is our beautiful sister Andrea Anabeir. Um, and she's also a pre-med student. So the med students run in the family. Um, but she just has a heart that truly wants to give. 
I remember her coming up to volunteer for Mercy. No one asked her, but she volunteered herself. So thank you for having that heart and teaching us what generosity is. Amen. Awesome. Then coming down all the way from St. Louis, to someone who is definitely a, a couple that that's uh, passionate about serving the poor, and that's with uh, Jesse and Dina Lane. Woo! Amen. Come on. And there, some that's be blessed are those that serve the poor. And last but not least, this is this is for, for, for make sure you ever if you have if you're not full by the end, and this is gonna make you make you a full full come up around this over, amen. And because it's gonna be people they definitely care about um, anyone, um, disciple, friends, family, everyone. It's just a heart for people in general, and that is definitely Ryan and Kriya Mason, <laughs> and their amazing sermon that's gonna be blessed are those that care. So what amply every person assigns is someone that we can look um, up to, learn from, and, amen, take those traits that they have, take the lessons that they give us, and apply it in our lives in 2024, and then we'll close it out. Without further ado, <laughs> this is Mama Christy. Come on, Mama. Mercy Flow family, how are you? All right. So today I'm going to be speaking on blessed are those who have a heart as a child, who are a child at heart. So when we think about a child, we think about pureness, innocence, and joy, and there's such a bundle of joy, it's so cute. But when we are baptized, we are reborn, and we become like a newborn baby to Jesus. And we are supposed to, Jesus wants us to have a childlike heart so we can imitate him. According to the Bible, childlike means simple and trustworthy and imitate me to simply follow. When I remember when I was baptized, I remember I couldn't wait until I hit that water and I became so joyful and so happy and, and so ready to just give my heart to God and just, I just dreamt of how when I'm ready to go to heaven, I just hold his hand and just go back to that childhood. In Ephesians 5 verse 1, it, it says, imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children and you live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, as a pleasing aroma to God. And everything that we do, when we, uh, we are supposed to do it with love, and we are supposed to be childlike. We are supposed to humble ourselves to him. We are supposed to follow him and imitate him. When Jesus was on earth, he prayed to his father. He loved his father was kind to others, taught children, healed others, and sacrificed himself for us. When we imitate Jesus, we are supposed to display the same type of mercy to others. When we think about our parents, we think about how we followed him, how we followed them, how we, how we wanted to imitate them, how we wanted to be strong like them and, and gain wisdom from them. And we're supposed to do the same things as child children of God, children of Jesus. In Isaiah 54, verse 13, it shows that we are to humble ourselves as children. We are be, supposed to be able to be taught by the Lord, and we were able to, we're able to teach each other and have peace amongst ourselves and, as children, and our children will be blessed. What wonderful, how wonderful is that? To just have peace. Being a mother of five, it was very, very hard Ooh. for me. Yes, raising them all by myself. Wow. The daddy That's decided. Strong. The daddy decided to. God decided, hey, I am not going to give her anything she can't handle. So here's five kids. I remember. And you know, it it just I I think about man, I miss that. I miss that. I had with my little kids. Now they're all grown up. <laughs> but I missed that. I missed it. I think about when they just laid around all together watching TV and just the bond we had and just, you know, playing with them outside. 
hide and everything like that. And that's how we're supposed to be with God. We're supposed to imitate those things with him. We're supposed to play with him. We're supposed to joke with him. Jesus loves his children, you know. He wants us. He wants us to be like that. Children are a joy from God. And we are a joy of God. Yes, we are. Jesus wants us to be that way. So for us to be merciful and to be blessed as children with God, we are to humble ourselves. I always wanted to, when I became a part of ICC, I wanted to be a part of our church. I wanted to see what I can do for mercy, for God. Come on, Andrea. Let's go. Good afternoon, family. Good afternoon. <laughs> My name is Andrea, and I'm very, very honored to be a part of the Mercy Family Ambassadors here in Chicago. I've been a part of the Mercy Ambassador only for two, two months, three months, and they become a family to me. When I felt down, like going to the hospital, talk, seeing that the chat was, oh my goodness, I have a family who cares for people, so let's do this together. And, <laughs> thank you. So... Uh, when I think about mercy and I think about generosity and when I th think about righteousness, I guys, I just want you for a minute to close your eyes and envision your life the, uh, and envision the last day of your life and then just, okay, what did I do for God? What did I do for his kingdom to advance his kingdom? Ask, this, ask yourself this question. Have I been merciful to people? Did I give generously to people? Did I serve the, at the least, the, did I serve the people who doesn't have anything? And the most question, the most important question that I asked myself yesterday was, what legacy did I leave at the kingdom of God, my spiritual family? I wanna take you to a story of a man in the Bible that literally his story changed history because he left a spiritual legacy. And then please open your Bible to Genesis 18, verses 17, he's left, phrase 17 to 19. Let's go. Can I hear a man when you're there? <laughs> then the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nation on earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. So the Lord will bring about for Abraham what has he promised him. Amen. God has chosen Abraham to make a special covenant of love with him because only he believed in God. So that was credited as righteousness to him. Yes. And But with that huge blessing, with that huge righteousness that God has for Abraham, came a huge responsibility. Yes. And this responsibility was to pass down the conviction that Abraham has to his descendant. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing that he did it with generosity. Mm -hmm. He was generous with his money with God, he, with time with God, with how he thinks with God, he was just generous. And in the same way, family, we are the chosen one for God. Like literally we just, we have his grace and by faith, we can pass down legacy to the next generation in the kingdom. We need to pass the legacy of generosity and the, like the mindset of generosity need to pass down, especially being generous with mercy now to the next generation in the kingdom. I've been blessed because I've been only a disciple for 10, 11 months, and God has been, God has been so generous to me. I've been, I used to live in a darkness. I used to be, I, I used to be a bad person, so God showed me mercy. And now I believe it's my responsibility to show mercy to the world because God entrusted me with it. I'm not going to play with it. Um, there's a verse in Psalm uh, 112, 5 and 6 says that the righteous will never be shaken. And it says, and continue to say it, that the generous will always be remembered. Yes. And in that Bible verse, it showed me that the generous and the, and the righteous are one in God's eyes. Wow. That's so crazy. And just, 
I'm all of the whole days, I'm challenging myself to be more generous in whatever I can, whatever I little have. I know God, I'm only like, man, it, like it, 10 months spiritual, but God, please, I love you. Let's do something together. Right. Guide me, God. I need you. Please have mercy on me so I can be merciful to others. The, the tricky thing with generosity, although, that when you pray for generosity, it's like God really loves to test us on it. He's do, he doesn't play with it because God knows where our, heart, where our treasure is, our heart is going to follow. If my heart is merciful to the church, to his kingdom, oh, God is going to be so happy with it. He's going to look at me, you are a noble daughter. That's what I can work on. <laughs> Praise God. And then, um, excuse me. Amen. Praise God. You got us fired up. Let's go. There's a Abraham, there's a God tested Abraham with his generosity. And if you go back to Genesis 13, there's a conflict that happened between Abraham and his nephew Lot because they had a lot of flocks, a lot of herds, and the land wasn't enough for both of them. And though Lot, because he's older and because of his title and because he's the uncle, he had all the right to choose the land. But he chose to humble himself, and he chose to sh to get to to give Lot the decision to choose the land that he, whatever he wanted. Amen. So he was merciful. He was humble. He was so generous in his giving because he knew that the bless that what gave him um, like what gave him meaning to his life wasn't the blessing from God. Was the promise that God gave him that he's gonna be a great nation. So he stand firm in his promise of God. So he kept going in generosity. He kept going and giving, especially yeah. nephew was his family. That's all he has got. So he, he didn't hold back anything from him. No, he gave it all because he knew if God gave it, God can take it and he's going to multiply it. Go. Amen. And I love that we are being a part of a church that believe in evangelizing the word, preaching the gospel, making and like sold out disciples. But in the same hand, like on the other hand, we believe in the kingdom that we need to show mercy. We need to show compassion. Because Jesus, when he was on earth in his ministry, he did both together. Yeah. He was preaching and healing. He was preaching and feeding. Yeah. He, was, he was preaching and doing miraculous stuff. Yeah. He walked in hand in hand. Yeah. But the keys for those two gifts, uh, Peter says that preaching is a gift and s serving is a gift. The key to unlock these two things is being generous. We can't, and we receive the spirit of generosity at the day of baptism. Don't let the word just push it down. Just keep going and being generous, please. Um, there's one thing, uh, there's a challenge that actually I want to give to you. Please just think about how God comforted you and go comfort other people. And please, as God bless you, even if it's a small thing, because, because if we just number the blessings, and the smallest thing, I have a breath this morning. Literally, this is the most beautiful. I can take a breath without feeling pain. This is mercy. This is a blessing. Yeah, so let's right. count them and let's show comfort. And let's, let's give a blessing to other people as God has shown us this blessing. Yeah. And then I want to leave you with a challenge. Please think about what legacy do you want to leave behind? Is it a legacy of a spiritual generosity or just what I'm doing here? Why am I being a disciple? I want to work with God in hand in hand to advance the kingdom. Early for some of you guys, is it? Are we fired up today? Hey, Amen. Let's not be wiping the crust out of our eyes right now, okay, man? But uh, I think he did such a such a phenomenal job. Thank you, bro, for uh, such an incredible charge. And I love how you said mercy has to be personal. It has to be personal. Meaning, if we don't have mercy ambassadors in our church or mercy coordinators in our church or our evangelists or region leaders are mercy coordinators, we got to take that personally. Yeah. It means we don't have enough people. We don't have enough servants. You know, and if mercy is personal, I love how he said, you'll have personal projects, you know? And he, he equated it to, we, we do our absolute best to be personally fruitful. Amen? I hope we do. Amen? We do our best to be fruitful in here. Amen. So if we do our best to be personally fruitful in the ministry, then we got to be personally fruitful, and we got to do our absolute best to be personally fruitful with mercy. So I love the challenge for each of us to have a mercy project. It's not a two-time-a-year thing. It's not. It should be a personal project. 
I love that. You know, he said we need to make a, a decision to speak up. That's pretty powerful right there, right? He said we got to speak up, not just to the people in the world, but also to, to, the, to the people in our church. We got to yeah, speak right. up. We got we to gotta create mercy projects, and we got to speak up. We got to pull people in. They say, oh, you know, I'm too busy, my schedule. No, 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 you need to speak up. You need to be like, bro, we need to figure it out. We need to find a way. Because Jesus found a way for you, so we need to find a way for mercy. Yeah. And then I love how he said mercy has to be consistent. It has to be consistent. Our walks with God are consistent. We don't just have our quiet times twice a year. I hope we don't. We don't have our quiet times twice a year here, amen? All right, we're not, we're not just having two quiet times a year, right? But he said mercy has to be consistent. Yeah, right. Meaning, if you don't have consistent mercy projects, if you're not thinking about mercy consistently, he challenged us, you got to be consistent with mercy, amen? amen? And since Jesus was consistent in his ministry, and Jesus was consistent in mercy, so must we. What a powerful calling. And we see in the Bible how serious and how consistent Jesus is with his ministry and with mercy. Every scripture you see Jesus in, you see him serving in some capacity, right? Either serving the poor, serving the disciples, serving those that have questions. Jesus was a consistent man. And he calls us to be consistent as well. So let's be consistent. Let's have a personal conviction about mercy. If mercy isn't your conviction, you got to make it your conviction today. You got to do what you got to do. Maybe you can have a prayer circle, but let's let's take the challenge not to leave this room without mercy being our personal conviction. Amen. Amen. And I'll pass it over to my wife. All right. Well, um, Desmond, you did a phenomenal job. Um, you definitely allowed God to use you to really just help us all to have a deeper conviction. Um, I echo what Ryan said, but a couple extra things that you said. Um, don't go away from go away from being a church that does merciful acts twice a year. And you know, something that I've personally heard over the last year is, you know, through grumbling and complaining can be like, well, why don't we serve the community more? You know, and my conviction is if God puts that on your heart, then you should be the one mm -hmm. that should then go and initiate and yeah. to do it. Um, and we're all disciples, so we're all called to deny ourselves, right, to pick up our cross daily. And so even if there's mercy projects, you know, none of us are too busy. None of us are too, we're, none of us are CEOs, <laughs> you know, owning our own major company. So we all have some time, you know, even if it's 30 minutes, even if it's 10 minutes, you know, uh, we can do what we can. Um, uh, one, my therapist had said this to me. She said, do what you can, not what you have to, you know? And so sometimes you may not be able to give four hours of your time, but you can give something, you know? And that's, right. that's the same heart that Jesus did. He gave us his all. He didn't just give us something because um, we wouldn't all be here if he just gave us a little bit of something, right? Um, and then the other part that stood out to me was Jesus was the perfect steward of his time and resources. And all of us have different jobs that we work at. We have different talents. We have different gifts. We have access to different resources that one another doesn't have access to. And those are avenues that we can use to serve the community. You know, like if God has put a project on your heart, that means that that project is for you to lead, for you to maybe even share with the mercy coordinator and say, you know what, God put this on my heart. How can we make this happen? I don't know where to start. I don't ha know if how to get a grant. I don't know, you know, where the organizations are. But God put this particular vision on my heart. Can you help me? You know, and Jesus, you know, is the ultimate example of humility. And honestly, part of mercy is really being humble because sometimes you don't know what you're doing. But God, if God has given you that heart to serve, then don't let that heart go to waste. And that's something that I definitely am t take away from uh, Desmond's lesson. And uh, something else that I thought was really powerful is finding an activity you can do every month with your Bible talk. So one thing, a practical that I would love to share is sometimes you can look at what other organizations are doing and just join what they're doing, you know, and that's a good way to get your feet wet and just be able to build that connection in the community. 
and then be able to kind of be like, oh, wow, they did that. We could totally do that. And then use that yeah. as groundwork to be able to then propel you forward to do something amazing for Mercy. So thank you, Desmond, so much just for giving us that, that charge. Thank you. Yeah. Amen. So let's have compassion in action. Amen. And as we take our fellowship break, because we're going to take a fellowship break after this, let's fellowship with each other. Let's share about what we learned, but also, too, let's get some ideas cooking for what you want to take back to your church. Amen? This isn't just a nice session for the workshop. This is a charge for us to take back to our churches. Amen? So let's really get those ideas cooking. And just start with what you're passionate about, like Aquia said. Like, if you have a passion for your community or you have a passion, something you're passionate about, just start there. And I guarantee you that if you pray about that, God will open a door for you. So with that, let's take a five-minute fellowship break.